Hey guys, I'm Will from Tested. I'm here in Adam's shop with Eric Cheng, who's been here before. Hey Eric. Hello. Uh, <laughs> you're here for DJI today, and you're showing us the new Inspire One, which is the new quad that you guys announced a couple days ago on Treasure Island. Uh, that's right, yeah. Let's just run down speeds and feeds to start, because there's a lot of stuff that's happened. This is a higher end quad than the Phantom Vision 2. Is, you know, more professional use, right? That's the goal? Yeah, this is a higher end quad. Uh, it's sort of all of the technologies we've developed, either as standalone products or as part of older products, mm -hmm. rolled into a, a flagship. Uh, so this is a, a high, designed for higher end use, either high end hobby use or professional use in some cases. There's a ton of stuff that happens here. The first thing, and we're not going to show it now because we're inside, which we could, um, but it's a transformer. Yeah, when you take off with it, these they're sort of like wings and they come up into a V-shape and that drops the body and the camera below any of the landing structure uh, for a full unobstructed it, view. It's kind of like a Klingon bird of prey, right? So the wings come up and then the camera has a full 360 degree turn on the gimbal so you can see everything all, all around you. Right, that's right. So the camera can turn 360 degrees. It also drops the center of gravity b below the props. It's a little bit more stable that way. Oh, that, I didn't, yeah. didn't realize that. and and. It's because it's bigger, it's a bigger quad in general, bigger propellers, more weight, but what, what is it, close to three kilograms? Yeah, I think? just under three kilograms. So that's um, just, just over twice the weight of a Phantom series. Uh, the props are 13 inches as opposed to nine. Um, and the whole, the propulsion system is a lot more powerful. So our battery is a six cell battery. It's running 22 volts. So that's twice the voltage of the old Phantom. So there's a ton of lift. Uh, in this thing. And that means you're going to be able to go faster and go higher and... Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's, it's overpowered for most situations, which means that um, it can very easily tackle very, uh, complex environments, you know, like strong wind or gusts or... Flying over a volcano, al maybe? Altitude volcanoes, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. um, what else has changed? So the camera, it's a new camera, new gimbals. Uh, can you tell me a little about the camera? Yeah, the camera, it's a, it's a 4K camera. Uh, it's still a sm fairly small sensor, one over 2.3 inch sensor. Mm -hmm. um, and it's mounted on a three axis gimbal here. As you can see, it's totally stable. Um, so we shoot at 4K at uh, 30 frames a second or 24 and 25, 1080p at 60. It's also a 12 megapixel stills camera. It shoots in Adobe DNG RAW. All our photographers always want that. Uh, there's, it's a 94 degree rectilinear wide angle lens. So what does, so, hold on, what does rectilinear mean? Rectil yeah. So if you look at a lot of the footage that comes from um, either the, the vision or, or, or uh, platforms that are flying other cameras like GoPros, you'll see a, a lot of distortion. So as soon as the camera tilts down, the world kind of becomes curved um, and quite aggressively. So there's a ton of distortion. Most of us who, who do a lot of video remove that distortion uh, in post, which mm -hmm. is time consuming. Uh, and not ideal. So this will have uh, more or less straight horizons and it's a more natural look. So this would be sort of something more suitable for cinematography. Um, you guys changed some stuff to make it a little bit easier to fly, take off and landing, and then also give you better control at low altitudes, kind of where GPS doesn't have fine enough detail, right? Or when you don't have any GPS signal. So mm -hmm. for example, inside here or under the forest canopy, something like that, uh, you would typically lose GPS. And what would happen in something like the Phantom is that when you lose GPS, they're still stable, but they might drift around. So it no longer has position hold. And so what we have in the Inspire 1 is this stabilization uh, package on the bottom. You can mm -hmm. see there are three sensors here. Um, this is an optical flow-based stabilization. Um, it's actually a combination of optical flow and ultrasonic okay. or, or sonar. Um, so we, we can measure the distance to the ground uh, without relying on a GPS signal or a barometer. And we can also measure the rate of change. Um, so, you know, as the ground, as the aircraft moves around, the ground is moving, and this sensor tells us in what direction and how fast. So, when you have, when when the when the drone comes in and lands automatically, whether it's lost signal or the batteries in your controller died or whatever, it's not going to do the thing where it slams down really hard because it thought it was three feet higher than it was or or whatever. Yeah, we we used to do. I mean, all, all of these used to land basically by by descending slowly until they stop descending. Mm -hmm. So it, they're not aware of what's below them. But we know exactly how far away the, the ground is and we know what direction the ground's moving. Um, so one thing that's, that's really great with this and we can, we can demo it later if we fly, but you can hover it right above the ground. And anyone who flies these things knows that you basically can never hover it right above the ground because of ground effects. You're gonna, you're gonna crash, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna shift around a lot. Even with the GPS trying to keep it in the same place, you'll see it sort of move around. So with this new sensor, you'll, it's totally rock solid in position hold. So one of the things when you were giving us the demo over on Treasure Island before event a little bit, and you were flying with one of the landing skids on the dance floor, <laughs> just kind of skating in figure eights. And that's something, I mean, I'm sure somebody could do that with a, with a Phantom 2, but I, I couldn't and I would have crashed immediately had I tried something like that. So I thought right. that was really cool. 
Um, the optical sensor kind of makes it like the world's. It works similar to an uh, to a, an optical mouse, right? It's yeah, the same that's kind right. Of yeah, same kind of same kind of deal. Okay. What's the the flight time with the with the battery that you have in? Uh, it's eighteen minutes. Okay. Uh, so it's a little bit less than the the Phantom series, and uh, that seems to be sort of the the sweet spot right now for for qu larger quads like this. I mean, I'm sure if you're talking to people who are doing like establishing aerial shots and stuff like that. They don't need two hour linger time for that. They need a good five minutes and then enough time to do it a couple times, right? Yeah, most people who have a, a goal <laughs> in mind when flying uh, tend to find uh, 10 to 15 minutes to be enough for a specific shot. Um, battery's removable? The battery's removable. It, it just pulls straight up out of the body. Uh, and then and charge time for the battery. It's, it's a bigger battery, so it'll take a little longer, right? It'll take longer, but our charger is more powerful. So it, it's running just over an hour if you deplete the battery completely. And, and you guys have the, the logic, the charging logic is in the battery, not in the charger still? Right, and not only charging logic, but monitoring logic. So now on, from the app, you can look at the, the, qual the status of each cell and the, the health of each cell um, so that you get more information about the battery. It also counts charge cycles now, so you can, you can automatically sort of, or you can swap batteries out okay. after they've been used a certain number of times. It, and it counts charge cycles in the battery, not on the app? That's right, in the battery. Okay. Oh, that's great. So, so no surprises with batteries, which just seems no like surprising. Thing. Yeah. Um, can we talk about the controller? Because a lot, a lot, like it seems like a lot of work has been done here. Yes, the controller has been completely redesigned. Now, this is a prototype controller. The new one doesn't quite look like it's similar, but the new one's uh, it's white, and um, this iPad holder is totally different. Okay. Um, so the controller is great because it incorporates a lot of physical. Uh, physical controls, buttons and dials for camera control. Which you used to have to do with your fingers or with tilt on the app in a lot of cases. Right, tilt on the app or or if you wanted to hack in your own potentiometer, which is something that, that I did with early Phantoms, you could have a dial on the back. Okay. But there was some do-it-yourself required. And, and we eventually shipped a lever that controls the gimbal, um, but that's the only control we give you. So uh, you sort of start shooting video, you keep shooting, or you have to, basically you have to take your hands off the radio to access the camera. Which is a bad thing. Or, or not desired always. Yeah, it can be a bad thing. I mean, if you're shooting stills, it's not such a big deal. But if you're if you're shooting uh, video and you need to do uh, a complex camera control, um, like you're tilting while you're moving up and spiraling around a tower, mm -hmm. um, it was really hard to do that um, before. Especially with one person. Especially with one person. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have. Uh, a uh, start and stop video, we have a stills, like a take a picture button, mm -hmm. uh, we have a playback button, and then we have two dials, one of which pitches the camera up, up and down, and the other lets you cycle through and change camera settings. So exposure control, ISO, and shutter speed. Like your control setting on a DSLR or mirrorless camera or something like that. Yeah, that's right, like a toggle. Can it toggles and changes. Are these programmable? Can we change them to whatever we want to use, or are they locked at that for right now? Um, the camera controls, I believe, are locked at that. Now, this could change mm -hmm. um, because we have quite a bit of um, remote control customization that's possible just through the iPad app. Uh, so those of you who have been in RC for a while know that normally there's, there are very complex menus, uh, or you have to plug it into a, some kind of application on a computer. Yeah. Uh, but in this case, you can just configure it all here. So you can map channels, switch modes. Um, these are sort of advanced settings that most people would never need to touch. Um, but if you do need to, it's there for you. Um, one of the other things I, that I noticed you did is you pulled the range extender and a lot of the external stuff that maybe wasn't even in the Phantom, and it's all built into the remote now, into the controller. Yeah, so one of the fundamental things we did is we integrated LightBridge. Uh, LightBridge is a high-definition wireless transmission system. It's something that we sell as a standalone product for $1,400. So you can, um, you can transmit either 720p or 1080p uh, great distances and also get metadata and, and uh, aircraft control. We have 16 radio control channels on it and also an analog wow. video signal. So it's, it's just basically data transport. So we have now made that the primary um, way that the, the radios control uh, talk to their... Oh, so it's no longer a boosted up Wi-Fi signal and now it's, it's light bridge. Now it's LightBridge, right? It's no longer on Wi-Fi, so you can see we're we're connected not through Wi-Fi anymore, mm -hmm. but through a, a USB cable through the Lightning uh, Lightning port. Um, and so what that means is on our on our controller here we have USB, and we also have uh, we have HDMI out. So not only can you connect an iPad or an iPhone or an Android device, but a any HD monitor that has an HDMI input. Oh, that sounds great. And and one of the things I was excited about is you know previously you had to choose between a video signal out that had telemetry or a clean video signal that you can use for, for footage or capture or whatever, you can contr control that on each in output now? Sort of. So okay. you, on, on, from a single radio, you can only output video to one device. Okay. So HDMI or USB. Okay. Now, if you have both attached, you get a clean video signal on HDMI, and you have all the, all the metadata 
and control on the, the but no video on the iPad. But no video. But what we do have is dual operator support now. So with a second identical remote control, uh, you can have a, a, an operator just dealing with the camera. So triggering it Got and it. controlling the gimbal um, in more than one direction, not just pitch, but also yaw. The full so 360. The full 360. So if you can have a pilot just worrying about the position of the camera, and then the camera operator is controlling the camera. And from there, you can, have, you can use either one of the ports for output. Um, so what we did um, at the event, at the launch event, was mm -hmm. we had a second um, a slave unit uh, at, the, at the mixing board, and we just had the HDMI output going to the board, and then the pilot was roaming around flying. Okay, so that's how we were getting the live, HD, the live 1080p video off of the quad while it was yeah. flying around above us. That's exactly right. And, Very cool. And it didn't, you know, they were stock units, we didn't do anything to them. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I've been <laughs> hacking these kind of HD wireless solutions for the last few months because I've been doing live streaming from Burning Man mm -hmm. and, and the volcano thing. We wanted to record HD locally just in case we lost the aircraft. Right. So these were all sort of built using DJI products, um, kind of glued together, and they all work. Um, but it t did take a lot of testing to make that work and configuration, whereas now it's just it's just this is of, off the shelf, right? Out yeah. Off the shelf. Um, the other thing you guys announced at, at that event was uh, first uh, kind of SDK and APIs to let people access uh, you know write software that takes advantage of the hardware that you guys build. Yes, and this is super exciting for us because um, we are reached out to by industry, you know, virtually every, I would say every minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we get an email from somebody who has a, an idea about how a camera in space could be interesting for them. So some of the industries are really obvious, like farming, construction, uh, search and rescue, right. um, things like that are, are really, real estate. Real estate requires no modification to the equipment to work right now. Um, and But we haven't written any specific apps for those industries. Um, and uh, so what we're doing now is allowing people in those industries or service providers to write their own applications to control the Phantom series. So this would be Phantom 2 Vision and Phantom 2 Vision Plus okay. um, are the aircraft that have Wi-Fi signals coming to mobile devices. So you can write a mobile app for Android or iOS and control the, the, the aircraft. You can control the Phantom, control its camera, and, and basically tell it to do whatever it's, you want. That's amazing. So, we, so I mean, that, that should open a lot of possibilities for... You know, like you said, search and rescue is an obvious choice where people can set up aut autonomous search grids, send the quads out, bring them back in for battery changes, and send more out with right. thermal imaging cameras or whatever. Yeah, and log which them. areas have been done and right. how long ago. And um, yeah. Also, disaster disaster recovery. One of the things uh, the PIX4D folks have done, uh, ma you know, 3D maps of places where there have been mudslides and stuff like that, I know, and, and that seems like it's an incredibly valuable tool. Um, there's a couple of different levels to the SD, to the to the developer agreement, right? Yes. So there's there's different kind of levels of access that people can get. Can you can you talk a little bit about that and how that works for people who want to build apps for for their yeah. pods? So pretty much anyone can download what we're calling level one. It's a very, very creative name, I know, but <laughs> level one SDK, which is basically read-only access uh, except for camera. Okay. So you cannot control where your Phantom goes. So you fly, you still fly it around manually. Um, but you can control the camera, so you can tell the camera when to take pictures. You know, one of the easy, one of the things that people did immediately was say uh, distance trigger. So okay. take a picture every ten meters. You know, this is very standard for survey. Um, we didn't support it, but now someone else can support it, and then they can take all those pictures and upload to them to the cloud, for example, right. for automated reconstruction. So that's level one, um, and you have access to uh, control the camera, but you can also read. Uh, what's all been written to the, the memory card. So, so there's, a US, there's a USB mode and you can just pull images and video off and, of it. And do you also get uh, read access to like GPS coordinates and accelerometer and gyroscope and that kind of stuff? Yeah, so full telemetry access, including live stream of video. So lower, lower quality okay. anal analog video you get. Um, so that's level one. And level two access requires an application. So this is now, ent you're entering a partnership with DJI. Okay. Um, and these are, these are still, these are currently negotiated on a one-to-one -one basis. So we don't have kind of standard, a standard partnership so agreement. Because if you're an independent developer who wants to write something that's in the conservation space or something, um, it's probably going to be pretty easy to work with DJ on that. But if you're uh, you know, a multi-global, multinational organization with a very specific business goal and you're charging a lot, we're going to have a different agreement. Okay. So that's, that's how it works now. And that, you have full control over the Phantom using, using level two SDK. Um, meaning you can you can tell it where to fly. You can upload and download waypoints. Um, you can automatically take off and land. Um, so full control. Basically, the 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 vision, the current vision app that you have on the iPhone or SD or the Android devices, mm -hmm. um, can be written with SDK level two. 
Okay, so yeah. so you're when you say everything, you really mean everything. You're you're kind of achieving parity with a lot of the open source flight controllers. Once people reach the level, they're going to get, get enter into right. a developer agreement with you. Well, I would say we're reaching parity in non-research situations. You know, so if your goal is to replace the positioning system, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to do that with ours because you can't get in that inner loop in the code. Okay. Um, so you know, we're sort of we're opening up the useful parts for the vast majority of people doing research or using these for commercial purposes. Most researchers tend to want lower level access, so something that's open source is probably more appropriate. Okay, I, I'm super stoked to go out and fly the new quad. I think the API stuff is gonna be really important in the long term, and we can't even imagine what people are gonna use it for right now. Um, but can we take it out for a test flight? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, great. All right. Thanks, Eric, for bringing out the Inspire to show us, you know, how it flies and, and give us the rundown. I can't sure. wait to get my hands on one of these. Yeah. And, oh, okay, I think well, it's gone. See you later. <laughs> well, uh, we'll be back with more on Tested soon. See you guys later. See you. Bye. Yeah, the zoom back. Yeah, ready? No, oh, that's the wrong way. Oh, you want what, which way do you want to do? I don't. I don't want to go back. I don't want to decapitate Joey. Oh, okay, we won't decapitate Joey. Yeah, please. yeah, we will go up. And are you able to control the gimbal? Oh. Whoa! Oh. That's amazing. No way. Bye! Bye, <laughs> quad. That's great. No way. That's, That's amazing. amazing.